Kit Guru is at Thermal Take for CES 2023. We've got four special builds behind us, but we'll come back to those at the very end. They are indeed very special. Instead, we're going to look at CTE, which stands for Centralized Thermal Efficiency, which is another way of saying lots of airflow in cases with updraft. These cases are coming soon. We think they'll actually be here really soon, like April really soon. So we're starting with the largest version, CTE C750. This is air and this is the TG version, although it still has TG on the air on the side. It's this front panel here, which on the TG is glass. Anywho, the point is really large dual chamber, which is why it's such an enormous open shape here. You can see the motherboard's been rotated 90 degrees, hence the graphics cards hanging natively in the PCIe slot. And although that power cable, to my mind, is uncomfortably close to those fans in the floor, loads of fans, huge 420mm radiators, epic cooling. In a sense, however, this is really showing what CTE could be. I don't think Thermaltake really thinks this is the case most people go for at a, probably about $300 pounds. Nonetheless, looks good. This, with all the RGB going on, you'll note the fans change from case to case, giving us a bit of a look at what Thermaltake is doing with fans. So here we have the CTE C750TG. Bit of a mouthful. We've got a distro plate in the side if Luke comes around to give us a straight on look. Huge radiator in the front huge radiator in the rear, and RGB galore. And as we can see this time around, the GPU's got a water block on it, which ironically makes it a lot smaller than the native air-cooled graphics card. Then we come to the CTC700 Air. This is significantly smaller than the 750. As you see, there are two fans across the floor of the case, and that gives us the clue. It is a good bit smaller but in principle has a lot in common. I'm sure they want me to say something like shares common DNA or some such. As you can count, we've got three fans in the rear, three in the front, two in the floor, and I'm looking just to check, there are indeed two in the roof. So we've got huge amounts of airflow, once again, vertical updraft or downdraft, and the motherboard rotated 90 degrees. Next to the CTE C700 Air is the TG version. And here we have a pump res unit standing on one of the fans in the floor of the case. They've actually packed that hardware in blooming tight in my opinion, clearly showing just what can be done in a case that is reasonably large in size. And don't forget dual chamber. Then things start to get even more interesting, in my opinion. CTE T500TG. This is actually a fairly conventional case if you look at it. So we have power supply shroud in the floor of the case, thumb screws on the glass. I won't try doing that one handed. Loosen thumb screws, off comes the glass to reveal the interior. So we don't have fans in the floor of the case here. I don't doubt you could put one there. Three at the front, one in the roof. We've got the PCIe gubbins going on there and then three fans at the rear because, of course, it's vertical updraft, downdraft. You will appreciate the connecting cables to the rear I.O., which is actually under this cover, is slightly awkward, but we had a look inside. It seems quite durable. There is always more work once you change the orientation of the components in a case. That's just a fact. The next case, the CTE T500 Air, I like because they stuck an air cooler on it, one of their own naturally, and as a result there is a monumental amount of space. Loads of RGB, some interesting fans that we'll come to when we get further around this uh, suite. You can see that there's actually potential in this case for a lot of airflow and nice clean lines of airflow at that. Then we come to a brand new case that's just been announced by Thermal Take. This is not coming soon, this is here now. This is the Series 500, priced at 160 or 170 pounds dollars. Interesting. So we rotate that, the glass opens, looks fairly conventional. Three fans in the front, one in the rear. Those four fans add to the cost. They've added a cooler in the roof. So that's obviously, those fans are not part of the case. This vertical graphics bar, however, is. 
and that bar attaches top and bottom. It's rigid and as a result it's supporting the graphics card but some of these perforations in the power supply shroud are actually tapped. You can move this mount either fore or aft so you've got a certain amount of latitude. The uh, pattern in the perforation is interesting. You will note that undo these two thumb screws. That panel comes away, which means you can then get to these screws, remove that panel and replace it with the LCD panel kit, which is specific to this Series 500. We saw something very similar with one of the little tower cases. The idea is you can either have a CPU temperature or some such scrolling through the display, or you can have a little image on there. As I recall, I used the Kit Guru logo. Off with the front panel. This uh, interesting piece of styling, I don't even know quite how to describe it. That solid steel, folded sheet, goes up and it means that you have this uh, split line. And then the front panel snaps back in place around that side mounted front I.O. And again, the whole pattern in that front panel, different. Certainly not boring. And here we have the Series 500 TG ARGB in black, but there's nothing inside it. And as a result, there's this inky pool vanishing into our video. There is actually a build that we'll see later used in this case. It looks very smart. Moving on, the Tower 200. I've reviewed the Tower 100, which is tiny, and the Tower 500, which is huge. The Tower 200, the logo is clearly just for the show. That won't be part of the case. That looks like a sensible mid-sized case. And we can see vertical GPU, radiator at the front, little LCD panel. There's a pump reservoir unit mounted on one of those fans. And then the motherboard hiding away in the back. Uh, we're quite confident this case will be with us very soon. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Thermotech wants to launch a Tower 300 sometime later, which obviously will be sized between the 200 and the 500. Next to that, we have the Tower 200 in black, looking quite cutesy, uh, using an AIO rather than custom loop, which gives them considerably more room to work with. The Cycle Desk 100. Now, this combines a desk with a bicycle, and frankly, beyond that, there's not much more I can say about it. I'm certainly not going to do a demonstration. Clearly, the idea is while you're sitting indoors working at your desk, the idea is you're pedaling away, racking up the miles. Well, I admire this effort, however, it's not for Leo. Mm -mm. And while we're at it, the TT100 bike backpack is also not really for Leo. Obviously modelled here with a folding bicycle. This is very much a, you pays your money and you takes your choice in my book. Even Luke couldn't be persuaded that he might want to ride this particular sample. Passing by the Argent P900 Smart Gaming Desk, you may recall this was reviewed by Luke. An awful lot of building went into that, and the result included a great deal of RGB, plus a certain amount of up and down functionality. It's time for some cooling hardware. First up, Tough Liquid Ultra 420 RGB. As the name suggests, it's a 420mm version of an existing cooler. So always good to see things getting bigger and bolder. If you're after 420 rather than 360, there's a new candidate in town. Both Luke and myself feel that that LCD on the pump body looks quite impressive. Next, we have a distro plate that is intended specifically for the Core P8, which is a huge case. This distro plate includes a D5 pump and is about the same size as a 480mm uh, radiator. It's big. Then we move along to the Core P6, which is the glass on all sides case, weighs an absolute ton. Here we have a new distro plate specifically for the Core P6, which is smaller than the one for the P8, naturally, and again, LCD display at the top. At the rear of the P6, there's something dead interesting going on. It's a dashboard for the Pacific TF3 liquid cooling system. Essentially, it's analog dials a la car dashboard kind of thing, speedo, taco and so on, fuel gauge, so you can show off data for your PC in the back of your case if you choose to mount it in the rear, 
or you could put it on the floor. Potentially anywhere you've got a 120mm fan mount, you could put this unit. The pricing for this top of my head was something like £100. It was not unreasonable for something that is quite unique. And while we're looking at the P6, it would be rude not to point out that the water block is a new Pacific for this specific Azus ROG Strix RTX 4090. And then we come to fans, lots of fans. James recently reviewed Swaff Fan. The idea is simple but ingenious. The idea is you can simply pull out the hub complete with the fan blades and install a different unit that reverses the fan blade direction. So rather than having to flip the whole unit, you can simply install a different assembly and lo and behold, you've reversed airflow. The interesting thing here is that the fans will come with a choice of three uh, rotors. They are airflow in both directions, pressure in one direction, but not pressure in the other direction. We don't have a clear explanation why you don't get a choice of four rotors, but three is what you get. Swafan EX means magnetic. To daisy chain your fans together, you don't need to connect cables together. It's handled all by this cable, which, let's face it, that's Apple MagSafe, if ever I've seen any. And at the end, we have a proprietary connector that goes to the Thermaltake hub, and thus is controlled by Thermaltake software. So ease of installation, minimal cable clutter, one single cable connection for up to three fans. You can't daisy chain more than three together at the moment, and available in either 140 or 120. CT120, CT140 in white and black. Uh, we've got RGB and non-RGB versions. These are the fans that will be appearing in those CTE cases that we saw at the start of this tour. They are basically updated OEM fans that we're going to see in a great many thermal take cases. They're full frame, which should help maintain air pressure rather than having air come back through cutouts. Uh, they're a hybrid fan blade design, so a combination of airflow and pressure and basically multifunction. Moving down the line, Tough Liquid Ultra 280 AIO with an LCD on the pump body. And then we have the Tough Fan 12 and 14 Pro in a two pack. We're used to seeing triple packs for fans, quite frankly. Uh, these have updated fan rotors using crystal polymer for the fan blades to make sure there's no blade creep. That ensures that you can have the tiniest clearances between the tip and the housing. Two air coolers, one is dual tower, the other, somewhat surprisingly, is for Threadripper. These look like they're just uh, filling gaps in Thermal Take's long list of products. And then we come to Tough Ram, available in six colours. So here we can see four. And here we see the other two, i.e. black and white. Tough Ram is the lower spec memory uh, that goes up to 5600. Obviously, we used to see DDR4 Tough Ram, now it's DDR5. We also have some Tough Ram XG. Moving the two memories close together, you can see that the light bar in the top of the Tough Ram XG is completely different to the light bar in the top of the Tough Ram RGB. This memory goes up to 6600, this stops at 5600. Almost at the end here of this enormous array of products. And we come to power supplies. Thermaltake's updating their PF3s and GF3s to make them ATX3 compliant. That's good to see and interesting enough, but it's not exactly new. What is new is this. The Tough Power SFX1000. Even as an on-off switch, but more importantly, it has the special connector for your RTX 4090 and is ATX3 compliant. We don't think we're going to see this for a couple of months yet and I'm not quite sure how much that's going to cost. I suspect it'll be expensive. But the idea you can power your full-on PC with this tiddly little power supply, I think that is absolutely remarkable. And we finish up with four special PC builds. These two by Stuart Tonks at GGF and these two by Timmy Parker. This is the Series 500 in gold, so it's been repainted and looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, as to what colour the coolant is in Stuart's build, I wouldn't like to pass comment. I'm going to say it's beer coloured and I'm going to leave the rest of it up to you. But I do like the fact he's done a different take on a brand new case. Very smart. And you can see the LCD display there. 
Here we have a core P3 Pro and we can see that this distro plate has been tilted on a 45 degree angle, which is certainly unusual. Very smart, very clean, just as we've come to expect from Stuart. And then we see a bit of a hybrid. This is a Core P3 Pro, but with a Core P6 distro plate crowbarred into the side position. Very nice. And we finish up with another Series 500 build with an absolutely stunning paint job. That was a lot of new products from Thermaltake. Admittedly, many of them are coming soon, but in the next few months, we're going to see everything in this room. Can't wait to review a great many of those, although frankly, the bicycle's not for Leo.